Today students, we are studying chapter number 2 that is the living world. In some previous videos, we have studied about some characteristics of living. These are growth, respiration, responsiveness to stimuli, movement, excretion. And today's video, we are going to learn some remaining characteristics of the chapter. Now, let us start with first characteristic that is reproduction. Reproduction. Now students, what is reproduction? It is another important characteristic of living organism or it is a process by which every living organism produces another living organism which is like themselves. So students, let us write here definition. A process by which every living organism produces other living organism like themselves like themselves such process is called as a reproduction a process by which every living organism produces another living organism like themselves means what a human being they are reproduces human beings monkeys dogs cows they are produces another living organisms like themselves. Mango tree, it reproduces mango tree. So all the living organism, they produces another living organism like themselves. And this process is helps to increase population of their group and uh, their next generation will be increased by the process of reproduction. Now some animals, they give direct birth to their child where some animal they lays eggs. So in different animals different ways of reproductions are takes place. So let us see this. So first animals gives direct birth to their child where some animal they lays eggs. Now the animals like human uh, dogs, cows, monkeys and flying bat, we know bat. So all that they are coming under the class mammal and all that mammals they give direct birth to their child. Means what? Uh, their uh, eggs of this animal are developed inside the body of female and after the development of that egg or after the development of ova they give direct birth to their child. And this type of animal they are called as a viviparous animal. Viviparous animals. Okay. So examples are human beings, dogs, cows. And next type that is lays eggs. Mostly all the birds and some animals like crocodiles, reed, lizard, turtles. They lay eggs. Means they do not give direct birth to their young ones, uh, to their child. And they lay eggs. And after coming out from the body of female, the eggs are getting developed and by the process of hatching, their young ones are reproduces. Okay, by the process of hatching of eggs, their young ones are coming out. And such type of animals, they are called as a oviparous animals. Oviparous animals. So in this way, animals gives birth to uh, their child means they produces their young ones and such process is called as a reproduction. This is a very important characteristic of living organism. Come to the next characteristic that is lifespan. So next characteristic of living organism that is lifespan. Students, we know that animal uh, in the process we have seen the animal give birth to their child. So every living organism complete their life cycle within birth to the end. Hmm? Means from their birth to the end into specific lifespan, into specific duration of time. And such is called as a lifespan. A, a different living organism, they are having different lifespan. Means a human, they are having lifespan uh, from 60 to 100 or 70 to 100 years where dogs they are having lifespan from 12 to 18 years 
means within this uh, duration of time within this life span they completes their life cycle different stages of their life uh, they get birth they become uh, they are growing up to specific time the growth is stopped they become adult then they carry out reproduction and after the process of reproduction every uh, living organism their organs become weak they reduces their energy and at the end of um, end stage is they uh, faces death they become dead and their life span is completed so uh, different organism they are having different life duration life span so this is about the life span which is another characteristic of living organisms means every organism that coming birth they are uh, facing death too so this is about life span now last characteristic of living organism and it is very important too that is cell structure cell structure now students cell what is cell so it is the structural and functional unit of life cell is what a structural and functional unit of life whatever we are what we can do it is uh, only possible due to a cell we know that life is exist on planet earth only and that life is starts from single cell only so a cell is very important uh, feature or uh, it is a structural and functional unit of every living organism okay students so according to this cell the animals are divided into different groups and these groups are unicellular unicellular organisms and next it is multicellular organisms unicellular and multicellular now students unicellular they are having single cell hmm? animals which are made up of single cell only made up of single cell single cell only they are called as a unicellular uh, living organism where another that is animal they are made up of two or more cells animal are made up of two more cell two or more cells okay so in this group unicellular organisms uh, we have uh, know the examples amoeba paramoecium they are coming under this group they are unicellular organisms where all the complex organisms like human dog tigers are there so they are having uh, more than two cells many cells inside their body so they are called as a multicellular organisms so in this way according to this cell or cell structure they are divided into these two groups unicellular and multicellular okay so this is about last characteristic of living organism we will see next part now students let us see last bit of the chapter that is useful living organisms and harmful living organisms so some uh, plants and animals they are useful to us in two different ways we are getting food from them we are used them for medicinal purpose too so some parts of a uh, plant they are using as a vegetable where some um, birds they are giving us eggs like hen and also provide us a meat so that in this way they provide our or they um, satisfy our need of food in this way plants animals are useful as are used as a food purpose also they are used as a medicinal purpose uh, like hirda behda tulsi these plants we are using for different medicinal purpose and some body parts of animals are used for the uh, uh, medicinal purpose too now some body parts like uh, sheep they are uh, giving us fur so uh, by using that fur we are making different things so in this way some animal they also uh, their body parts they are also important or useful for us in this way some uh, animals some plants they are useful for us now harmful things so some plants they are 
like uh, datura plant that is a uh, toxic plant to us so some animals some uh, poisonous snakes are present around us so this type of animals are toxic to us uh, and they causes harm to us so in this way plants animals they are uh, harmful to us toxic to us and some uh, plants they are itching they causes itching so in this way they are harmful to us where uh, sometimes dogs are biting us and uh, we are suffering from different diseases uh, from the animals in this way animals and plants are causes harm to uh, human beings harm to us so in this way harmful living organisms are also there now last bit is there uh, wild organisms or uh, wild animals so animals which are living into the forest they are called as a, a wild animals and these wild animals when entered into our uh, farms then uh, they destroy our farms so they cause again harm to us so in this way wild animals the animals which lives in a forest they are also harmful to us okay students so this is about the uh, harmful living organism useful living organisms in this way this chapter is completed you can solve the exercise in your notebook till then thank you